some of you this teaching will make you angry because you will see that you've not been answering a spiritual roll call your name would have been called many times in the spirit where are you to receive these supplies that are necessary for your advancement but for many of us you have not received your daily bread that makes for excelling in ministry and today ladies and gentlemen food is ready does that sound like a good restaurant hallelujah to share with you on the mystery of sufficiency our daily bread Matthew chapter 6 please and verse 1 the Bible says Jesus was teaching you know his the people who were there his disciples alongside all who came to hear him and when you read Luke's synoptic account it actually this discourse was an answer to a question they came to him and they said teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray and then Jesus began to put some preambles together um, he began to talk to them about hypocrisy you know praying so that men would see them he was correcting a few things theologically I don't know how we arrived here we call this the Lord's Prayer but um, it's not so Jesus was not praying here this was rather a lecture this is the Lord's model teaching on prayer I'm convinced that the Lord's Prayer is classically found in John 17 that's where Jesus prayed. He took out time to pray. The entire chapter was dedicated. It showed the prayer of Jesus. It began as a discussion. But when you get to verse 9 of John 17, you will see that he was actually praying. Hallelujah. So, but then Matthew chapter 6, it holds something that we use for our teaching tonight. Let's go quickly to verse 11 for sake of time. Jesus began to teach what we know as the Lord's prayer. And in that he was giving us a model on how to pray he was not necessarily asking us to recite it as a ritual or a chant and so on and so forth he started by saying when you pray pray in this manner our father so he says that when you are approaching God in prayer you must be mindful of God as father you have been taught about the fatherhood of God the Hebrew word is Abba the Greek is Pata it means source sustainer defender protector our father when you approach God approach him with the consciousness that even though he is God Almighty but prayer is a family affair are we together now number two he says which art in heaven that means faith will be required every time you pray because he resides in a dimension that is not earthly so which art in heaven is a revelation to you that even though you are seated with Christ in experience you are here on earth but you are communicating with a God who resides in a dimension that is not earthly so faith will be required number three hallowed be your name that means you approach God with the spirit of reverence in as much as he is father he is also God Almighty and so that you approach him with the spirit of reverence and then verse 10 says thy kingdom come that means your ultimate desire in the place of prayer should be the arrival and the manifestation of his kingdom are we together do you know what he's teaching here I'm just digressing to put things in perspective he's saying every other prayer request you are going to have is because of the absence of the manifestation of the kingdom so that whilst God is interested in solving your problems here and now the real remedy for any prayer request is that you contend for the manifestation of his kingdom that when his kingdom comes there are many requests you will not have again are we together now thy kingdom come so as you pray for tea you pray for bread you pray for increase you pray for healing he's saying all of those things are deficiencies they are showing you that their their presence is there because the fullness of the kingdom has not been made manifest so thy kingdom come must be every believers ultimate prayer and it tells you how the kingdom comes by your will being done in earth so everywhere the will of God is done his kingdom comes are we together now the coming of his kingdom and by the way you need to understand that when the Bible uses the word kingdom he's not just talking about a state or a nation he's talking about a, a culture an atmosphere a reality that an atmosphere and a reality can superimpose your reality that which is consistent 
with God's realm of reality. Let it be done in earth. You notice I have taught you, he never says on earth. He says in earth. And the first earth is you as an earthen vessel and then your territory. So your kingdom come, your will be done in earth. My life. Are we together? Before my environment. And then we get to verse 11. And then he makes a profound statement. He says, when you pray, do not be afraid. Do not be ashamed. Do not be embarrassed to ask the Father to give us this day our daily bread. Profound scripture. Give us. So he's talking about receiving now. Give us this day our daily bread. Two times he uses the expression day. Give us this day, not next week. Give us this day our daily bread. Let me help you understand what daily bread here means. Daily bread here does not necessarily mean bread literally. Now, you understand that um, the Bible has a very rich capture of similes and metaphors. The reason for this is one, it is a way that God communicates to men. But number two, um, this has also been helpful because of the various transitions in languages and cultures. So many times Jesus would use similes and metaphors to communicate uh, kingdom realities, not just parables. Are, are we together? So it's important that you are able to discern that some of the words you see expressed in scripture, they are not literal as they should be taken. Generally, when you study systematic theology, one of the things you learn is the principle of biblical interpretation. That means there are rules that govern interpreting scripture. Number one, for instance, is called the law of first mention. That every time you study a scripture, um, a thought line, you have to go to where it was first mentioned, and then that becomes the thought line that you use in interpreting that scripture everywhere it is found. Are we together? And then number two is called the law of emphasis. When the Bible stresses on certain thoughts, then it's important for you to also place a lot of seriousness on it. Um, these are some of the principles that govern interpreting scripture. And generally, the way to interpret scripture is number one, literal interpretation. Just a little crash course on theology. Literal interpretation. The first way to interpret scripture is not prophetic interpretation, is to, ad to address it literally. Now, if it does not make spiritual sense, by addressing it literally, then you are going to have to deal with it within the context or related comparing scripture with scripture to bring perspective to it. And if it still does not make sense, then you will have to buy into the lens of the spirit to give it a prophetic interpretation. Are we learning now? So when Jesus says, give us this day, back to our scripture please, our daily bread. It is not out of place uh, when you think of bread literally, but then the idea here is not that of a loaf of bread. The idea here is sufficiency. So bread is used there to represent sufficiency. Everything that can give you life, everything that can put you at a vantage position to actualize destiny is called bread. You get the idea? So when the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, um, in that case, as Jesus was speaking, it means literal bread, food. Are we together now? You see the difference between that bread and this bread. That bread, he literally was talking about eating physically because he was contrasting it with the word of God too. Who is learning so far? Right, so he says, give us this day our daily bread. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth and he made a very profound admission. He says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. He says, but our sufficiency, that means we have sufficiency of ourselves to in Corinth. And he made a very profound admission. He says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. He says, but our sufficiency, that means we have sufficiency, except that we outsource that sufficiency from God. Our sufficiency, I'll define sufficiency shortly. Our sufficiency is of God. In fact, let's continue verse 6. He said, who has made us abled ministers. The word able there means capable, able to rise to any occasion. Abled ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit for the letter killeth. 
but the spirit giveth life so paul here is admitting that look when you see us um invincible when you see us able to do the things that we do actualizing destiny and frontiering the cause of the kingdom with no restraint breaking barriers it is not that our sufficiencies of ourselves our sufficiency the wherewithal the strength the capacity to always deliver without disappointing it is given to us but it is not from us is someone learning now in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, Paul still speaking to the church in Corinth and he was basically talking about giving but he brought something very profound. He says, and God is able, I like this, to make all grace, all grace, all grace, not some grace, not grace, all grace are bound toward you that ye always, say always, one more time, say always, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things all sufficiency in all things all sufficiency may abound to every good work you want to understand this scripture you have to read it from the end to the beginning that means in order to abound to every good work you need to have all sufficiency in all things are we together and that that sufficiency only God is able to make that grace abound towards you so no one is able to actualize destiny, live an effective Christian life and make commendable kingdom progress indefinitely if you cannot outsource sufficiency from God. Jesus said, give us this day. Someone say, give me this day. My daily bread. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 35, Jesus was still mentoring the disciples who would later become apostles. And when he sent them, he made a very profound statement recalling that experience he said unto them verse 35 says when i sent you watch this without purse without script without shoes lacked ye anything this was a question he said i sent you as empty-handed as you thought you were i just released you to go but I sent you with a message, I sent you with a mandate. So whilst you were on your way going, even though you stayed longer and you returned back, my question to you is that when you went, did you lack anything? And the Bible says they answered and said nothing. This must be the destiny of every believer. That you can stand by the mercy of God and say in ministry, in business, in life, I have encountered my daily bread. There is an allocation for me by the mercy of God as proof of his fatherhood. That if he's mindful of the fact that I am on earth and that I am part of his program, then it means there is a system of supply called my daily bread. Whether you understand the dynamics of accessing it or not, like you'll be learning, is a different thing altogether. Some of you, this teaching will make you angry because you will see that you've not been answering a spiritual roll call your name would have been called many times in the spirit where are you to receive these supplies that are necessary for your advancement but for many of us you have not received your daily bread that makes for excelling in ministry you have not received your daily bread when God sent you children with those children there is daily bread to raise them whether you receive it or not when God anoints you into an office, there is daily bread. We do this in politics. We do this in government. When we call on civil servants and public servants, together with the employment letter and the, uh, what they call it now, the appointment, there are benefits and privileges. Are we together? Sometimes you need legislative aids. And oh dear, we have our dear people here who have a number of them. And they will tell you they have a number of them based on the gravity of the function. Give us this day our daily bread there is a daily bread allocated for every believer in Christ my assignment tonight is to show you the dynamics of accessing the bread for the journey that you will be so sufficient not in yourself always rising to the occasion never disappointed if God calls you to be a teacher of the word there is a daily bread that keeps the spirit of revelation ever fresh upon you God cannot give you that kind of mandate without an allocation of grace are we together now 
So our daily bread is not just limited to food. Everything that keeps you alive, everything that keeps you fresh. If God has called you into an apostolic ministry like he's granted some of us, there is daily bread as strength so that you don't fall in the journey. I mean physical strength. Strength beyond what you eat is called daily bread. Many believers have embraced the assignment but they did not embrace the daily bread and so they die as if it's not God that sends them. But may things change for you tonight. There are many parents who do not know how to ask for the daily bread for their children. Lord, you gave me children. These children came from you. It means there is a system of sufficiency to be able to raise these children. You gave me this company. There is daily bread as a consistent flow of wisdom that can help me drive this business. Give us this day, he said, that when you pray, do not forget to ask and that the allocation is daily, not monthly not weekly not yearly not per service not sunday after service or sunday after sunday give us this day our daily bread is someone learning when i sent you without purses without script did you lack anything and they said nothing second peter chapter one please three and four now apostle peter is teaching us something very profound he says according as his divine power hath given unto us how many things all things one more time say all things he's still talking about sufficiency he's saying with respect to life and godliness there is a provision in the economy of god where the saints can access all things that pertain unto life and godliness that pertain unto life how it comes is why i'm here tonight but just for you to know for starters that whether or not your life experiences the supplies that are made for your journey one thing you cannot listen you cannot blame god because as far as the integrity of the world is concerned there is already a provision there was a provision before you arrived and that that provision is daily it takes your understanding this reality and then you can access it by faith. You will live such an invincible Christian life that will be such a model of God's grace when you know how to receive your daily bread. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching this powerful video. Hope you were blessed. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.